Truman appointed an interim committee to advise him. It was chiefly a political and military group, but it appointed a scientific advisory panel. The Italian Nobel Prize winner Enrico Fermi, who started the first chain reaction, Ernest Lawrence, an American Nobel Prize winner, Arthur Compton, also an American Nobel Prize winner, the man who had appointed Oppenheimer, and Oppenheimer himself. But did they pass on the feelings of their fellow scientists about the use of the atom bomb? Or were they just technical advisors? Is it true, as one of them, Arthur Compton, wrote after the war, that throughout the discussion it seemed to be a foregone conclusion that the bomb would be dropped? I think it is hard for me to, to answer that question. Um, the parts of the meeting that I remember, I believe that they were the most protracted, the deepest, the most intense ones in which the Secretary of War, Mr. Colonel Stimson, and General Marshall participated, had to do with um, the post-war future, with the prospects, technical prospects, which we were not all knowing about, but of which we knew something, and the human prospect, the possibility of collaboration uh, with other countries, the possibilities of control, the control of information, the hope of an open attitude above all the relations with Russia, and what this would do to them, how it might injure or help them. Um, I think that it probably was assumed, it certainly was always assumed at Los Alamos, that uh, if the war were not over and not clearly to be brought to a conclusion by diplomatic means, uh, this weapon would play a part. Um, I'm not sure that the men who sat around that room all had the same idea of what would happen with the bomb, and I therefore can neither confirm nor refute what Captain wrote. I think there was some discussion in which I didn't participate about the use of the bomb, but there was none in which I did. But some scientists, like James Frank, a former Göttingen professor, were becoming desperately concerned. He and a group of his Chicago colleagues were acutely aware that they alone among mankind knew the terrible act that their leaders were considering and its possible consequences for the world. Under Frank's chairmanship, they produced a report pleading for international control and urging that the first bomb should be dropped on an uninhabited island as a demonstration to the Japanese. But was the government's advisory panel of scientists as perturbed as their colleagues? Was the possibility of a demonstration test of the bomb ever discussed with the interim committee or at their own meetings? In our presence, uh, in the panel's presence, it was not, I think, discussed with the interim committee. But I did have a request to gather the panel at Los Alamos and uh, consider, among other things, this question. Uh, this was, I should say, before we had ever fired a bomb. We didn't know how big it would be. We didn't visualize exactly what it would do. But uh, we did still think about whether uh, its destructiveness, uh, its danger, uh, could be vividly demonstrated over a, a barren and uninhabited target. And we were very doubtful of that. Uh, we probably did not do justice to its pyrotechnic qualities, um, which became apparent only later, which were known on paper but not realized. Uh, and the panel, as is well known, um, remarked, answered that it was doubtful that a, a demonstration over a desert area or the sea uh, would be very effective. But according to Groves, the interim committee was fully aware of the arguments in the Frank report. We had handled that in two ways. First, uh, 
I believe that I had informed the committee as to the contents of it. And then it was very carefully considered by a scientific panel to the interim committee, which was made up of uh, three Nobel Prize winners and, uh, w and uh, Dr. Oppenheimer, who was the head of the Los Alamos Laboratory. And they, we felt that these men represented uh, the viewpoints of the scientists and could not necessarily possessing what each one of them uh, thought, but could distill all of the reasons pro and con. Uh, the other men were Lawrence, uh, Arthur Compton, and Fermi. Uh, this they did, and they arrived at the same conclusion as the infant committee, that they could see no other uh, solution but to use the bomb without warning. Even in the Manhattan Project laboratory's opinion was divided. 22 out of 150 consulted said they were in favor of any military use. However, when Leo Zillard went round the laboratories in July 1945, he got 70 signatures to a petition urging Truman not to weaken America's moral position by dropping the bomb. Oppenheimer could have known of this when Zillard went to Los Alamos, but did he? My recollection of this is not completely sure. I think it was after the war was over, though someone may have told me of it before. I didn't. I think really found out about it until I came to Washington later. But the Hungarian scientist Edward Teller was at Los Alamos and directly disputes this. Szilard wrote me a letter and described the discussions he had with Professor Frank and with others. He asked me to join and he asked that I should find others in Los Alamos to join. I went to the director and asked his advice, and he advised me in no uncertain terms that I should not participate and not ask anybody else. So I did. The director was Oppenheimer, but other Los Alamos scientists share Oppenheimer's uncertainty and say the existence of the Zillard petition was not widely known. But anyway, it was too late now by early July, Truman had received the unanimous recommendation from the interim committee on the use of the bomb, that it should be used against a genuine target in Japan and without prior warning. The Frank report had been discounted and its advice rejected. By July the 7th, Truman was out of reach on board the Augusta, bound for the Potsdam Conference. The decision was his, and he'd taken it. The war with Germany was over before the Potsdam Conference, but the war with Japan was still a bloody and bitter fight.